what is the limit as x approaches 3 of the absolute value of x minus 3? For this problem, we can simply use direct substitution. There's nothing stopping us from doing so. So this is simply the absolute value of 3 minus 3, which is the absolute value of 0, and that is 0. Now what about this one? What is the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x divided by x? In this case, we can't use direct substitution. 0 over 0, what is that going to be? It could be 8, it can be 1, it can be 0, it could be undefined. So we, you can't just plug it in. Now, what we need to do is determine the limit from the left side and the right side in order to figure this out. So let's start with the left side. Now what we can do is plug in a number. So left of 0 we can plug in negative 0.1. The absolute value of negative 0.1 divided by negative 0.1, what is that? The absolute value of negative 0.1 is positive 0.1. If we divide positive 0.1 by negative 0.1, this is equal to negative 1. And so that's the left side limit. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the absolute value of x over x is negative 1. Now what about the right side? Well, let's try plugging in positive 0.1. The absolute value of positive 0.1 will remain positive 0.1. 0.1 divided by 0.1 is positive 1. So that's the right side limit. Now, because the left side and the right side are not the same, therefore this limit does not exist. So that is the answer. That's how you can evaluate these types of limits. So you got to check the left side and the right side. Something else that can help you is to realize that the absolute value of x is really, you could break it up into a piecewise function. It's equal to negative x and positive x. It's negative x when x is less than 0, and it's positive x when x is greater than 0. So therefore, when you have the absolute value of x over x, this is equal to positive x over x, which is 1 when x is less than 0. And it's equal to negative x divided by x, which is negative 1 when x is greater than 0. So therefore, you can turn this into a piecewise function. You could say this is negative 1 when x is less than 0, and positive 1 when x is greater than 0. So to graph it, it looks like this. On the left side, the graph is at negative 1. And on the right side, it equals to positive 1. And that is why the limit as x approaches 0 from the left was equal to negative 1. That's why we got that answer. As you approach negative, as you approach 0 from the left side, the y value is negative 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side was positive one because as you approach zero from the right side you can see that the y value is going to be positive one. So if you graph it it can help you to figure this out. So just remember anytime you have the absolute value of a function you can break it up into the positive version of the function or the negative version. Let's work on another example. What is the limit as x approaches 5 from the right of the absolute value of x minus 5 divided by x minus 5. So this time we're just trying to figure out the one side limit. Not the left side or not as x approaches 5 from either side. We only want the answer as x approaches 5 from the right. So go ahead and try that. Now keep in mind the absolute value of x minus 5 we can write it as positive x minus 5 or negative x minus 5. 
when x is greater than 5, this one holds true. And this one applies when x is less than 5. So therefore, the absolute value of x minus 5 can be equal to one of two things. If we make it positive x minus 5, then this is going to be positive 1. And if we make it negative x minus 5, these two will cancel, and you're going to get negative 1. So when you see a problem like this, the answer is either, is one or two answers, it's either 1 or negative 1. And if you ever get confused, a simple way is just to plug in a number. So 5 to the right, we need to plug in something that's bigger than 5. Let's try 5.1. 5.1 minus 5 is positive 0.1. The absolute value of positive 0.1 is 0.1. And 0.1 divided by 0.1 is 1. So this is the right side limit. As x approaches 5 from the right side, this is going to equal positive 1. What is the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of the absolute value of x minus 4? over x minus 4. So in this case, let's plug in a number that's less than 4, like 3.9. 3.9 minus 4, that's negative 0.1. And the absolute value of negative 0.1 is positive 0.1. So therefore, this is going to equal negative 1. Now, what about the limit as x approaches 3 from either side? So to do this, we need to evaluate the left side and the right side. As x approaches 3 from the left, we need to plug in 2.9. So this is going to be the absolute value of 2.9 minus 3 divided by 2.9 minus 3. So then this is going to be a negative 0.1 divided by negative 0.1, which turns into positive 0.1 divided by negative 0.1, and that's equal to negative 1 from the left side. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right side, based on all the examples that you've seen so far, you know what the answer is going to be. This is going to be positive 0.1 over 0.1, which is positive 1. So because the left and the right side limits do not match, this limit does not exist. What about the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of the absolute value of x plus 2 divided by x plus 2? Try that problem. So what number should we plug in? if x approaches negative 2 from the left. Let's make a number line. Here's negative 2, here's negative 3, and here's negative 1 on the number line. So from the left side, notice that we need to pick a number between negative 3 and negative 2, but close to negative 2. So we can use negative 2.1. So we're going to have the absolute value of negative 2.1 plus 2 divided by negative 2.1 plus 2. So that's going to be Negative 2.1 plus 2 is negative 0.1. The absolute value of negative 0.1 is positive 0.1. Positive 0.1 divided by negative 0.1 is negative 1. So that's the answer. Now if you want to do it another way, you can do it this way as well. So you can write a piecewise function and make the statement that the absolute value of x plus 2 can be any one of these two expressions. It's x plus 2 when x is greater than negative 2. To find this number, set the inside, that is the x plus 2, equal to 0 and solve for x. And that's where you get negative 2 from. Now when x is less than negative 2, you're going to have the negative version of the function. Since we're approaching negative 2 from the left side, 
we need to use this part of the function because on the left side x is less than negative 2. So therefore we could say this is negative x plus 2 divided by x plus 2. And these two will cancel giving us negative 1. You can do it that way if you want to. Here's another example. What is the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of the absolute value of 3 minus x divided by x minus 3? So what can we do in that case? Well, if we turn it into a piecewise function, at least this part, we could see that if we set 3 minus x equal to 0, x will equal 3. So at 3, the function changes. So there's two versions. We can have negative 3 minus x and positive 3 minus x. Now when x is, let's say, 2, that is when x is less than 3, 3 minus x is positive, which is OK. We need to use a negative sign to make it positive, because an absolute value function will make a negative value positive. When x is greater than 3, like 4, 3 minus x is, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So we need to put the negative in front of it to make it positive. So when x is larger than 3, we're going to get that expression. So 3 to the right is bigger than 3. So therefore, we need to use this. So this is going to be negative 3 minus x over x minus 3. If we distribute the negative sign and reverse the two numbers, negative times negative x becomes positive x. And then we're going to have negative 3. These two cancel, so the answer should be 1. Now, let's confirm it using direct substitution. So 3 to the right, let's plug in 3.1. So this is going to be 3.1, rather, 3 minus 3.1. And on the bottom, 3.1 minus 3. 3 minus 3.1 is negative 0.1. And 3.1 minus 3 is uh, positive 0.1. The absolute value of negative 0.1 is positive 0.1. Positive 0.1 divided by positive 0.1 is 1. So that's the answer. Here's another problem that you could try. Evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 from either side of the expression x squared minus 1 divided by the absolute value of x minus 1. Go ahead and try that. Take a minute, pause the video, and work on it. So first, so let's start with the absolute value of x minus 1. Now we can write it as positive x minus 1 or negative x minus 1. And if we set x minus 1 equal to 0, we can see that it's going to change at 1. So when x is greater than 1, we're going to get a positive value if we plug it into this. Let's say if we plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is positive. Now when x is less than 1, let's say if we plug in a 0, this will be negative, which we don't want. We want a positive answer. If we plug in 0 here, 0 minus 1 is negative 1 times the negative on the outside. That's going to make it positive. So we want x to be less than 1 for the negative version. Now, let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side to begin with. If we do so, we can use this portion, because on the right side, x is greater than 1. So the absolute value of x minus 1 will just be positive x minus 1. And we could factor the numerator. That's x plus 1 times x minus 1. So therefore, these will cancel. And then what we'll have is the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of x plus 1. So we can use direct substitution. 1 plus 1 is 2. So on the right side, the limit is equal to positive 2. So keep that answer in mind.
Now let's evaluate the limit from the right side using direct substitution. So let's use 1.01 because it has to be bigger than 1 but very close to 1. Let's confirm the answer that we have which was positive 2. 1.01 squared minus 1 that's going to be about positive 0 0.0201 and 1.01 minus 1, that's just positive 0 0.01. If we divide these two numbers, this is going to be 2.01, which is very close to positive 2. So that means that the answer that we had before was correct. If we plug in a number that's even closer to 1, like 1.001, the answer should be very close to positive 2. Now let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side. So the numerator can be factored the same way, x plus 1, x minus 1. And the denominator, this time we're going to use negative x minus 1 because 1 from the left is less than 1. So this is going to be negative x minus 1. And we can get rid of the stuff on the bottom at this point. We're not going to use it anymore. So let's cancel these two. And so we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, x plus 1 divided by negative 1. So if we plug in 1 now, it's going to be 1 plus 1 over negative 1. So 2 divided by negative 1, this is negative 2. Now let's confirm it using direct substitution, using the original expression. So 1 from the left, that's like 0.99. So 0.99 squared minus 1 divided by the absolute value of 0 0.99 minus 1. 0.99 squared minus 1 is about negative 0 0.0199. 0 0.99 minus 1 is negative 0 0.01, but with the absolute value, it changes to positive 0 0.01. And if we divide those two numbers, this will equal negative 1.99 which rounds to negative 2. So on the right side, it was positive 2. But as x approaches 1 from the left side, it's negative 2. Therefore, this limit does not exist.